Okay, here we are at our first attempt at EKG recognition. Um, hopefully you are looking at the strip. You can see some uh, familiar components, maybe a couple of QRSs, some P waves, that sort of thing. Let's use our system and see what kind of rhythm we have here. Okay, step number one, is it too fast or too slow? So we're going to be looking at the uh, QRSs. How far apart are they? These seem to be equally separated. So let's just pick one, follow the orange bar there. Remember we're, we're going to use our 300 rule. Uh, in this one we go 300, 150, 100 and see that it's it's just a little bit beyond three boxes. So it's a little bit slower than 100. Let's just put it down at 90 beats per minute. Now we're going to ask the question is the QRS wide or narrow? And we'll zoom in here and take a look at one representative sample. Um, let's take a look at this. You see a P wave right here. Uh, the QRS would follow that. That's the big spiky looking thing. And after that should be a T wave. And I see a little bump over here. There's our T wave. So now we have our components. We're looking for the, the width of the QRS, and remember we want it to be under 0.12 seconds, which is three small boxes. So let's take a look at where does the QRS start, and I'm going to put it down right on a line, right there. And where does it end? Well, it's, it's where the S wave, the bottom spike, comes back to baseline and I'm going to put it down right about here and we can count in between one two and a half that puts us under three boxes so we are narrow that's going to make this a narrow QRS that means that the signal from the AV node uh, was transferred through the Purkinje system okay so QRS we will put this down as narrow and our next question we're going to check the P waves. Remember what we're looking for there. Let's zoom in here. Uh, we have three complexes here. Take a look and see if you can find the P waves. We've got three of them in here, starting at the left. We've got one right there, one right in the middle, and one right there. I hope you pick those up. Uh, let's take a look and see. They are present. They're in front of every QRS. Uh, they look pretty much the same. So that would tell us that the SA node each and every time is the one that is starting the contraction. So we have them present, we have them uniform, and now we're going to do a, a new thing we haven't talked about called the PR interval. So it's where does the P wave start? And about right here is where the P wave starts. That That's the SA node firing. The P wave would be the Atria responding to that, and we know that the signal then is going to go into the AV node where it is delayed prior to entering the ventricles. So the QRS would be the beginning of the, the uh, it, would, it would be when the AV node releases the impulse. And let's put it right about here. Now the interval from the time the SA node fires, which would be the beginning of the P wave, the arrow at the left, and when it leaves the AV node, which would be the arrow on the right, should be no greater than 0 0.20 seconds or five small box. If it's longer than that, uh, we would call that a first degree heart block. This one is not. It's right on the border though. If you look at it, it's four and a half boxes, but all that matters is that it is under five small boxes, under one big box less than one big box. So um, this would be, let's, uh, evaluate the P waves. We're going to say that they are present and they are uniform. They're less than 0.2 seconds. So let's take that information and, and analyze it for a second. The QRS being narrow tells us that everything's okay south of the AV node. The Purkinje system's working great. We've got a good contraction of the ventricles nice and fast. The P wave 
tells us that the SA note is in charge. And, and so when we name this rhythm, we're going to name it, we name rhythms after where they originate. So this is going to be a sinus rhythm of some sort. It is 90 beats per minute. So that is not too fast, not too slow. Uh, if it is above 100, we would call it tachycardia, meaning it's fast. If it's under 60 beats per minute, we would call it bradycardia because it's slow. But this is not too fast or too slow. It's a normal sinus rhythm. How'd you do? Fairly detailed analysis of, of a, a rhythm. Uh, as we go through these, we can probably skip some of the thinking through them and, and uh, go a little bit faster, but I wanted to get into the details here so you can see what the steps are and you'll get better and better at this as time goes on.